I'm Ben McIntyre, uh, the author of Double Cross. Double Cross is the third part of my trilogy of books about wartime espionage. The first one was Agent Zigzag, which was the story of Eddie Chapman, a, a crook turned double agent who played a very important part in the very early part of the war. And then the second one was Operation Mincemeat, which was the extraordinary plot to float a dead body off the coast of Spain carrying false documents to bamboozle the Germans over the invasion of Sicily. Now, Double Cross tells the story of the last, really the kind of, the summation of British espionage during the war. Double Cross was the name of a group of spies who were the architects of the great D-Day deception, the fantastically complicated and brilliantly executed plot to fool the Germans into thinking that instead of landing in Normandy, the thousands of troops massed in Britain were aiming for Calais. The Double Cross team was, without question, the most extraordinary unit assembled during the Second World War. There were five key spies. Their code names were Brutus, Bronx, Treasure, Tricycle and Garbo. Two were women, three were men. They included in their number a dodgy Serbian playboy called Dusko Popov, a hysterical French woman who was so obsessed by her dog that she very nearly derailed the entire operation. A wonderful bisexual Peruvian playgirl called Elvira Concepcion de la Fuente Chaudoir, who was given the code name Bronx, which was the name of a particularly potent cocktail. And then perhaps the two most important spies of all were Brutus and Garbo. Brutus was an ultra-nationalist Polish fighter pilot, and Garbo was a former Spanish chicken farmer with a wild imagination who ended up creating a network of 27 entirely fake agents. The story of these five spies interweave and finally come together on D-Day when together they mount what was without doubt the most elaborate deception of the war. The task of these five oddballs was, under MI5's guidance, to feed the Germans such a plethora of misinformation that they would believe the attack was coming in Calais. Their story would have been impossible to tell, and indeed the spies themselves never expected their stories to be told. But very recently, MI5 has begun to release the entire archive of the Double Cross system, and it makes for an extraordinary story. Eisenhower had said to the deceivers, keep the 15th Army, the mighty 15th Army around Calais, out of my hair for 24 hours. In fact, the five D-Day spies succeeded in doing far more than that. They managed to bottle up huge numbers of German forces away from the main battlefield for weeks after D-Day. It was an astounding success. Even Kim Philby, who was then working in MI6, described it as the most successful deception operation of all time. 